What is up? What is good? What is Gucci? It is your girl Paige Christy here bringing you yet another impromptu video. Um, I wasn't expecting to do this video today, but I saw this thread on social media and I was like looking around. I was trying to tell you who I was looking for. I was looking for Sloan. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I was looking for Sloan. I was like, what, why is Sloan not reported on this? Is, is this like, this is Sloan's ish right now. I'm stepping on Sloan's, on Sloan's grounds. Okay. I'm on his side of the field. He's going to kick my ass out. Right. So I was looking for Sloan, I was looking for any other prominent YouTubers who tend to deal in these kind of discussions on social media and I couldn't see anyone. So I thought, well, the night is young. Let me just slap some makeup on and come here and talk to you guys about it. So basically, today we are going to be talking about something slightly different. We are going to be talking about Angus Cloud. Now what I will say before I get started in today's video is I am a little bit stoned. So because of that, I'm pretty sure instead of calling him Angus, there are points in this video where I call him Agnes. I apologize, but I'm not doing this again. So if you hear me misname this person, I apologize. Dude, I'm stoned. However, if you do not know who Angus Cloud is, let me introduce him to you. Angus Cloud is an American actor best known for his role as Fezco in the HBO series Euphoria. Angus Cloud, real name Connor Angus Cloud Hickey, was born on July 10th, 1998. He is an American actor best known for his portrayal as Fezco on the HBO television series Euphoria. Cloud was born in Oakland, California, although most of his family resides in Ireland. He attended the School of Production and Design at Oakland School for the Arts, where he was the classmate of his Euphoria co-star Zendaya. While working at Woodland Restaurant close to the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York, he was scouted by Euphoria casting director Jennifer Vendetti, who he initially thought was trying to scam him before obtaining the role of Fezco on the show. In 2019, he landed his first breakthrough role as Fezco in Euphoria, a critically acclaimed series about a group of high school students dealing with love, drugs and trauma. Cloud's portrayal of Fezco, a drug dealer with a heart of gold, earned him widespread praise from both fans and critics. Outside of acting, Cloud is known for his passion for fashion and streetwear. He has collaborated with fashion brands and has been featured in various fashion magazines. He also has a strong social media presence with a significant following on Instagram. Okay, so basically that is everything it is that you guys need to know about this guy. Angus Cloud. Okay, so with Angus Cloud, we need to really talk about the manager because all of this drama that has been taking place on social media in the past two days is all to do with his manager. His manager is a person called Diomi. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, but I'm not sure. And again, I'm stoned. So Diomi is his talent manager and is currently seeking over $60,000 from Angus Cloud and has basically made a huge thread on social media with Receipts Girl talking about his experience with Angus and out in some really personal details. So without further ado, let's just get straight into it. <laughs> Now the manager, Diomi, posted onto their social media and pinned to their profile on the 14th of April the following. On February the 21st, 2022, I resigned as Angus Cloud's talent manager. My decision to resign was prompted by Angus's verbal abuse, emotional distress and severe drug addiction, which rendered it impossible for me to continue my professional relationship with him. As a result of my resignation for over a year, I have been pursuing the collection of my outstanding management commissions from Angus, totaling over $60,000. 
Despite repeated attempts to resolve this matter amicably, I have yet to receive any of the payments owed to me. In sharing my story, I hope not only to find solace and healing, but also to inspire others who may be struggling to find their voice in an industry where most are silenced. I want to be a testament to the power of speaking up and owning one's truth, even in the face of adversity. Okay, he owes you money. Go get your coin. Let's see what you got to say. In the beginning of 2022, I made a resolute choice to leave the corporate sector and to pursue my passion as an independent talent manager. Nevertheless, I required a steady source of income to support myself during this transitional period. To prioritise my commitment to talent management, I choose to work a graveyard shift in an unrelated field and start working as a mental health technician at a rehabilitation facility. This decision allowed me to fully devote my attention to my clients whilst maintaining a reliable income. Interestingly, after only two weeks of working there, Angus became a patient. During the following weeks, Angus and I developed a close acquaintanceship, engaging in various discussions about topics ranging from family, culture, music and fashion to the complexities of the entertainment industry and its numerous challenges. Among these conversations, there is one that has left an inedible impression on me. During our exchange, Angus confided in me, revealing his desire to have a young black manager represent him. However, when he asked his then manager about the availability of qualified individuals within this demographic, the response he received was discouraging to say the least. The manager retorted, stating, they're not at the top. This remark has remained with me ever since, a stark reminder of the racial disparities that continue to plague the entertainment industry. After a month of engaging in numerous inspiring motivational discussions, Angus made me a proposition that left me speechless. He inquired about the possibility of me resigning my position at the facility and becoming his exclusive talent manager. Although the prospect of such a venture evoked feelings of apprehension and uncertainty, I was simultaneously motivated and determined to tackle the challenge head on. So, on April 5th, 2021, I resigned as a mental health technician and became Angus Cloud's manager. My resignation letter is below for reference. Even now, I maintain the belief that the fortuitous encounter between Angus and myself at the rehabilitation facility was not a mere coincidence, but rather a predetermined fate. In late April of 2021, Euphoria Season 2 was set to commence shooting in a matter of days. I communicated to Angus that his current team were underperforming and their services had to be terminated. It is important to note that Angus had limited interaction with his team and did not possess the necessary financial infrastructure, including a savings account or a professional financial management such as an accountant, CPA, business manager or business his account. Angus had been brought into the industry through informal channels and lacked the necessary support to manage his finances and career. In response to this situation, I intervened and helped Angus set up a new team. I hired a new acting and fashion agent, hired a publicist, facilitated the opening of a business account, ensured that his SAG-AFTRA account was correctly configured, helped him acquire health insurance and ensured that his euphoria payments were being deposited correctly. We secured the services of a bookkeeper, arranged for his taxes to be paid and established automatic payment for his bills. This intervention allowed Angus to regain control of his personal and professional life. Before my involvement, Angus's personal life was in a state of disarray. I believe that taking on his burdens and obligations could potentially lead him to prioritise his sobriety. Many of the managers or agents that I associated myself with expressed concerns that I was exceeding my expected duties, deeming my efforts as excessive. However, I felt a sense of shared responsibility with Angus and recognised that his failure would also reflect poorly on me. 
Consequently, I refuse to allow such an outcome to occur. Despite the negative perceptions of Sam Levinson in the media, I can attest that during the nine months that I spent with Anger on the Euphoria season two set under Sam's direction, he proved to be nothing but thoughtful, gracious and kind. While he maintained a reserved demeanour, he constantly displayed generosity towards the cast and the crew. Based on my personal experience, I found Mr Levinson to be a professional and respectful individual who valued the success of the project and the well-being of those in its production. In addition, it's worth noting that Sam Levinson consistently exceeded expectations in his efforts to support Angus. Mr Levinson has played an essential role in Angus's journey towards recovery, a fact that remains true to this day. Before the commencement of Euphoria season 2 filming, both Sam and HBO allegedly took the initiative to ensure that Angus's entire treatment bill was covered at the rehabilitation facility, which continued until he completed his program. It is also important to emphasise that for Angus to maintain his employment on the series, strict adherence to the treatment programme prescribed by the clinical director of the recovery facility was deemed necessary. The letter directly from HBO reads as follows. During the period spanning from April 2021 to July 2nd, 2021, Angus demonstrated significant progress in his rehabilitation program. It was evident from the numerous FaceTime calls he received that his peers had taken note of his improvements. His peers frequently frequently remarked on his new vitality and overall appearance with comments such as wow you're glowing your glow is back or you look amazing Angus despite Angus's efforts to maintain sobriety the situation was not without its challenges unfortunately his circle of friends had proved to be detrimental to his recovery as many continued to engage in drug and alcohol use around him rather than being supportive and encouraging him on his journey towards healing their reckless behavior and lack of regard for Angus's recovery served as a significant obstacle to his progress, ultimately contributing to his relapse. On July 2nd, 2021, Angus completed his treatment at the rehabilitation facility. Despite initially feeling optimistic about embarking on a new journey towards recovery and self-improvement, his existence took a turn for the worst, resulting in distressing and self-destructive behaviour. Subsequently, on July 4th, 2021, Angus extended an invitation to me at a barbecue, which I eagerly accepted as an opportunity to spend time with him outside of a work-related context. However, upon entering the premises and attempting to greet him with a hug, it became immediately apparent that he had resumed substance abuse, a mere two days after completing his treatment. Consequently, I promptly gathered my belongings and departed, informing him of my unwillingness to associate with him while under the influence of drugs. I then collaborated with both the Euphoria team and Angus's legal counsel to develop a plan aimed at preventing Angus from losing his job and more crucially, preserving his well-being. The strategy entailed implementing weekly and unscheduled drug testing to monitor his adherence to sobriety. However, in retrospect, I suspect that he may have engaged in deceitful tactics to evade detection due to suspicious purchases of detoxing cleansing products at the time. During the month spanning from August to the end of October 2021, the situation gradually deteriorated. It should be noted that I refrained from disclosing Angus's drug addiction to the rest of the team that I hired until at a later point. This decision was based on the concern that revealing this information prematurely could potentially result in the team disregarding Angus and potentially using him solely as a means to secure other clients based on his high profile status, rather than considering the quality of work that he was delivering. It should be noted that my behaviour, which the team may have perceived as controlling or overbearing, was in fact motivated by a desire to protect the reputation of all parties involved, including Angus. 
Prior to every event, editorial shoot or fashion campaign, I would sometimes stay at Angus's residence to ensure that he remained abstinent from drug use. On occasion, I would even sleep on the floor next to his bed and monitor his pulse every 30 minutes as I had been taught to during my time at the rehabilitation facility. During that period, it was interesting to observe how my achievements in managing Angus were being acknowledged. Colleagues would congratulate me and make comments such as, saw Angus's gap campaigns, you're killing it dude, or it must feel like you're living a dream right now. However, in reality, my primary concern was ensuring Angus's survival until the next day rather than basking in the recognition that I received. Towards the end of October 2021, Angus was presented with an opportunity to participate in a new project, entitled Your Lucky Day. Given the gravity of Angus's addiction, I implored his acting agents to expedite the booking process immediately after the completion of Euphoria's filming. That's a bit weird, that's a bit, that's a bit shady bit suspect if you ask me. I expressed my concerns that any delays could potentially have catastrophic consequences, including the possibility of anger suffering a premature demise. Despite being adverse to the idea of rehab, Angus was willing to consider acting as an alternative, as it provided a means of distraction from his substance abuse struggles. As of November 2021, with only three weeks remaining for the filming of Euphoria, Angus has evidently relinquished control of his addiction. The cast and crew had observed that Angus appeared to be in a zombie-like state, despite despite being capable of delivering a remarkable 10-page monologue in a single take. It's important to note that HBO had expressed a strong desire for Angus to remain sober during filming. As soon as the situation with Angus's addiction came to light, I swiftly collaborated with the on-set sober companion to identify a suitable rehabilitation facility. Thanks to that sober companion, we were able to make the necessary arrangements expeditiously. Consequently, by the time that Sam approached Angus about his behaviour, we had already resolved the issue within a matter of hours. In a poignant moment, Sam approached Angus with tears in his eyes and pleaded with him to fight for his life, expressing concern for his well-being with the words, I don't want you to die, man. I then arranged for a car to transport Angus to a rehab facility and he remained there for the final two weeks of filming. After a few days after Angus arrived at the rehabilitation facility, I received a call from a facility manager in the early hours of the morning informing me that Angus expressed a desire to leave. Upon arriving at the facility, it was apparent that Angus had consumed drugs and later admitted to me that he had smuggled them in and taken them before retiring to bed. I implored him to return to the facility, but he became verbally abusive and even threatened physical assault. After failing to convince him to return, I left the scene and returned to my residence. The following morning, I visited Angus at his condo and warned him that if he did not return to the rehabilitation facility, I would notify HBO and Sam of the situation. He eventually relented and I accompanied him back to the facility. On Angus's final day of shooting for Euphoria season two, I advised the entire crew against giving him a customary send off. Typically on an actor's last day of shooting, the director will close and Sam would announce, and that's a wrap for dot 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 and the crew would applaud. However, in Angus's case, I wanted him to believe that he had not completed his work on the show and that he would be called back for reshoots at any time. This was a strategic move to discourage him from using drugs and to ensure that he remained clean by creating the impression that his job was not yet finished. 
I hope to motivate Angus to stay focused and committed to his work, even after his official shooting had ended. Angus was resolute in his decision to leave the program and return to Oakland for the Thanksgiving holidays before commencing work on his new project. Despite my effort, there was little else I could do to persuade him to stay. Once Euphoria had wrapped, there were no further obligations to keep him at the rehabilitation facility and it was to force him to remain in treatment against his will. The production of Your Lucky Day presented an intriguing challenge for Angus as all of his shooting days were required to take place overnight, an unfamiliar schedule for him. Given the sedative properties of Xanax and Percocet, which typically induce feelings of lethargy, euphoria and pain relief, one might wonder how Angus managed to remain awake all night. It has been alleged that during his time at Oakland, Angus experimented with cocaine and developed a dependence on the drug. This newfound addiction seemingly enabled him to stay awake throughout the night and continue filming often without sleeping more than a couple of hours each day. Despite his struggles with addiction, Angus was remarkably adept at concealing his habits from those around him and was able to complete the film without drawing any attention to his situation. During the shoot, I accompanied Angus to the set each night and shared a trailer with him as he performed his duties. Subsequently, Angus received an offer for another role, this time in the upcoming film, The Line scheduled to commence filming in Oklahoma in January of 2022. Once again, Providence seemed in favour for Angus, as this new project kept him occupied and engaged. Initially, I had planned to allow Angus to travel to Oklahoma on his own, as I believed he needed to experience a greater degree of independence. However, on the eve of his departure, I received a distressing call from one of his roommates at approximately 4am informing me that Angus was unresponsive and struggling to breathe. Fortunately, I had recently relocated to an apartment merely one mile from Angus's residence, a decision that I made in the anticipation of potential emergencies such as this. I get to Angus's place and Angus has overdosed. Angus exhibited cyanosis in his lips and in his fingernails, prompting me to evacuate the room and administer Narcan intravenously. However, his breathing continued to deteriorate, necessitating the use for CPR and mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, which I was able to provide due to my training at the rehabilitation facility. Fortunately, these measures proved successful in reviving Angus. Regrettably, as he regained consciousness, Angus vomited onto my face. Please be aware that there was a scheduled driver tasked with transporting Agnes to the airport three hours from all of this happening. However, Angus is presently experiencing severe vomiting and is incapacitated on the floor while I am attending to him, cleaning up the vomit that has come into contact with my face. Currently, I am facing a dilemma. I am uncertain about the best course of action. Angus is visibly distraught and I express remorse for his actions and repeatedly asking me to forgive him. Angus began regaining consciousness. Sensing the need to address the situation, I inquired whether I should terminate all arrangements made for the project. However, Angus expressed his desire to proceed, thereby indicating his willingness to fulfill the commitments. Astonishingly, I remain perplexed to this day as to how he managed to pull through. We then headed to the airport and fortunately the staff at LAX extended their assistance arranging for Angus to be escorted to the airplane. He settled in and caught up on some much needed sleep. Then immediately I go to the counter and got an airplane ticket a one way to Oklahoma City. Angus calls me when he lands and I sigh in relief. He sounds much better. I tell him, don't worry, I'm getting there tomorrow morning. He gets to the hotel and immediately falls asleep. The hotel suite is a master suite with a bathroom inside and the living room area also happens to have a bathroom. Fortunately, Angus did not commence the shooting process
process until a few days later, entering his detoxification phase. It is worth noting that during detox, individuals tend to sleep for extended periods. Regrettably, no medication was available to ease Angus's symptoms because we were not at a rehab facility. We were in a hotel room in the middle of nowhere about to shoot a movie and because of covid regulations we were not allowed to leave the premises therefore angus had to undergo the process cold turkey while staying in oklahoma city i slept on the couch and angus occupied the bedroom i brought my dog along due to the extended duration of our stay and my reluctance to entrust my pet with someone else the thought of angus his manager and a yorkie occupying the same hotel suite in oklahoma city is amusing Nevertheless, to this day, the PTSD symptoms I still suffer from working with Angus immediately cause my heart to race. During Angus's detoxification period in the hotel room, I reverted to the training that I had received at the rehab facility. Specifically, I checked in on him every 15 minutes throughout the night, as per standard protocol during detoxification. I monitored his pulse and ensured that he remained adequately hydrated by drinking plenty of water water. It is remarkable that Angus was able to maintain sobriety for a period of 30 days during our visit to Oklahoma. This occurrence instilled within me a sense of optimism and encouragement. Angus and my Yorkie Nala in Oklahoma. Inevitably, Angus's filming had concluded, necessitating our return to Los Angeles. My discomposure intensifies as I'm aware of the impending situation. As expected, Angus succumbed to his addiction immediately after we arrived home. The very same night, he resumed his drug use. We have returned to Los Angeles and Euphoria has gained immense popularity worldwide. As the Fashion Week approaches, Angus had become one of the most prominent and widely discussed personalities. Angus was not ready for that level of celebrity. As of February 2022, Mike Amari is scheduled to host his debut show in Los Angeles. Despite the opposition from the team, I strongly recommend Angus to attend the event, believing that it would be a beneficial experience for him. My intuition proved accurate, as Amari's team graciously dressed Angus and provided him with a front row seat and then followed by a major fashion campaign, resulting in a fruitful outcome. The night of, Angus is back on drugs. I did not want Angus to attend under the influence but he was adamant about going and I wasn't going to let him go alone. So I pick an outfit, we mix a few pieces, men's and women's, and come up with an outfit that would cover most of the face and no one would know what was going on. After Angus's attendance at Mike Amari's debut show, the designer was exceedingly impressed with Angus's daring fashion choices leading me to anticipate a potential campaign collaboration. However, I have yet to receive compensation for my contribution to the campaign. A team member alleged that I had failed to substantially negotiate the deal. Despite my instrumental role in arranging Angus's backstage conversation with Mike Amari and receiving personal commendation from the designer. It's important to note that the campaign would not have transpired without my efforts in having Angus attend the show and facilitating his interaction with Mike Amari. In February 2022, during the ongoing Fashion Week, I accompanied Angus to New York with a busy itinerary. That included attending press, fashion shows, and editorial events. The purpose was to maximize his time in the city and then leave promptly. Unfortunately, Angus had acquaintances with toxic behaviors that dispersed throughout New York, which meant that we could not afford to waste time. 
Despite our initial plan, Angus became increasingly immersed in the newfound fame and attention garnered from his role in Euphoria's second season. The situation was compounded by his association with individuals who indulged his impulses and agendas without regards for his best interests. As a result, I found myself in a challenging situation as the person I had been appointed to assist and safeguard was no longer receptive to my advice and guidance. Instead, some of his companions and even some of the team members which I had hired viewed me as a hindrance to their ability to capitalise on Angus's name for their benefit. Angus's behaviour towards me had become extremely abusive. He had gone to the extent of disregarding me publicly in front of his friends and even my colleagues. Through my experience at the rehab facility, I'd come to understand that Angus was engaging in a pattern called staff splitting. A concept that is abstract but very real. Essentially, patients in recovery tend to categorise the professionals that they encounter as either good or bad based on their personal preferences. They then treat them accordingly. Over time, the staff members begin to internalise these judgments and some see the patient as entirely agreeable whilst others view them as impossible. This creates a split in the staff. Unfortunately, in Angus's case, the rest of the team seemed to have fallen for his manipulation and it resulted in a challenging situation for me. During the New York trip, I recognised I needed to remove myself from the situation due to the challenges I faced whilst working with Angus. As a result, Angus's agent and publicist assistant took over over his itinerary and accompanied him to all the scheduled commitments. At that point, I was mentally drained and felt like it was futile to continue fighting a battle that I could not win. Unfortunately, this was precisely when others attached themselves to Angus like leeches, taking advantage of his vulnerability. Additionally, Angus's behaviour changed during this period as he had become constantly tardy, something that would never have occurred under my supervision. He'd lost control and exhibited an egotistical attitude, believing that he could break any rule and buy anyone, which was disappointing. The Angus that I once knew no longer existed and it was sad to witness. I departed from New York City and returned to Los Angeles without Angus. He then received an invitation from the Versace team to attend their show in Europe. As it would have been our initial international excursion together, I perceived it as a potential fresh start for us. However, upon Angus's arrival in LA, I observed him in one of the worst states that I had ever seen him. Our trip was a few days away and I had already packed my bags and was eager to work. Nonetheless, I received a call from Angus's agent informing me that Angus no longer wanted me on the trip and preferred to travel with his friends instead. Regrettably, the agent did not support me and sided with Angus. Consequently, I resigned from my position that same day. As fate would have it, neither Angus nor I were able to attend the Versace show as Angus was denied boarding by JFK staff due to him being high on drugs. The JFK staff stated that Angus could be a liability in the air, therefore unable to board the plane. After my resignation as Angus's manager, Angus was left to manage himself for a period of a few months. During this time, what the world thought were initially residual effects of a skull injury he suffered in 2013 were in fact a result of Angus being under the influence of drugs, with no one to protect him or enforce boundaries. Angus was allegedly heavy on drugs during these three interviews that I am showcasing on this post. So I guess my name is Angus Cloud. So hold it. Bro. Yeah. I'm Angus Cloud and I'm about to play this or that. Hello, Internet. Yo, what's up? I'm Angus Cloud and I'm about to play this or that with variety. Big party or small gathering? Um... Shit, man, it, it depends. It's, 
I want it to be a, a big function if it's a whole lot of town please, a whole lot of people in the area, you feel me? We trying to have a, a real function, you feel me? A real party. Small gathering, strictly family, you know what I'm saying? We cooking up on a barbecue, we just vibing. You know what I'm saying? Exchanging story, just personal. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody invited to the cookout, you know what I'm saying? Everybody invited to the function, but you feel me? The small person, that's family business, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so as you can see here, he's like really slurring his words. And I do want to just like make a note before I continue watching these videos with you guys, that when it comes to um, addiction, and I've had family members who have been addic like addicted to drugs and stuff. So I, I feel like I'm somewhat well versed in this arena. But also when it comes to recovery, sometimes if the dosage levels are slightly off, things such as methadone, which is supposed to help you on your recovery can also end up sometimes being so unlevel that it makes you drowsy which is something that I've seen with like family members of mine in the past so it's kind of a little bit um presumptuous to believe that he isn't on the road to recovery purely because of things such as slurring their words and you know I want to see how their cognitive ability is does this person have capacity I don't know the first time being recognized by a fan, they was like, hey, are you from Euphoria? And I said, uh, no, I'm from Oakland, but I wasn't the show yet. What's up, Internet? It's Angus Cloud speaking live and direct, raw and uncut. And this is the first time. First time when I watched myself on TV, I didn't like it. I'm like, what the fuck? I suck at this. Why did they why did they pay me to do that? <laughs> Reactions to the finale. Um I'll tell him uh that's what's up, you know what I'm saying? What was your reaction when you first read the script? I mean what what part of the script? The, the final episodes. Oh yeah, I was uh, I was I was kind of tripping. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's that's wild. Where do you hope the show goes from here? Uh, I hope it keeps going up. Has it been all been emotional for you? Yeah. Yeah. How? how tell me. No, thank you. After my departure, although Agnes's team was fully aware of his drug addiction, there was no one present to intervene or prohibit him from working. Consequently, despite his clear inability to perform under those circumstances, they continued to engage him in work. And I don't know if it's just me, but I'm just kind of a little bit thrown by that comment because it just feels like from what I've read thus far, there's nothing showing me that Diomi had at any point tried to stop this guy from working he says he did but he, he never actually put any of that into action from what we're seeing here he was constantly booked and busy so how does that make him any better than you know his new quote-unquote handlers and you know my conspiracy tinfoil hat people will be buzzing right now if you know what i'm talking about leave a comment anyway let's just take a quick look at this video As soon as I resigned, I embarked upon efforts to secure payment of the management commissions owed to me. To this end, I endeavoured to utilise all of the proper and prescribed channels available to me. Specifically, I communicated with the agents responsible for negotiating deals, as well as Angus's legal and accounting teams. In addition, I made attempts to directly contact Angus himself. Unfortunately, these attempts were unsuccessful as I was met with dismissive responses and, in some cases, advised to disregard the matter entirely and move on. Despite my persistent efforts, I have yet to receive the owed management commissions. Back in September, Angus's legal representative did indeed present me 
agreement offer. However, the terms of the offer left me feeling undervalued as though I was being offered nothing more than a prefunctory token gesture. In essence, it appeared to me that the offer was akin to throwing a bone to a dog. Okay, so what that message basically says is that he's going to be paid $20,000 in two halves. Ten thousand dollars and then another ten thousand dollars within the next 10 days and then after that he will continue to get ten thousand dollars on the one year anniversary and then from that point on he'll get ten thousand dollars for each one year anniversary the monetary sum put forth in the settlement offer was far below the amount owed to me and the payment conditions were not acceptable given my awareness of my own value i was not willing to accept such unfavorable terms i remain committed to pursuing the full compensation to which i am entitled to and will not abandon my efforts I would like to emphasize that Angus Cloud's current level of success would not have been possible without my involvement. The well-known and beloved Angus Cloud of today is a product of my expertise in artist development, marketing and branding. Recognizing the significance of social media as a means of actors engaging with their fans and cultivating their following. I proactively implemented a social media strategy for Angus. I ran his Twitter account and live tweeted every episode of Euphoria Season 2 from his profile. Moreover, I spearheaded the Fexy campaign on Twitter, leveraging the platform to increase the impact of the on-screen relationship between Fezco and Lexi, which garnered considerable attention. In addition, I uploaded all types of content, behind the scenes, episode stills, etc. throughout Angus's different social media channels with a strategic motive to boost his audience engagement and optimise his online visibility. I was constantly on the lookout for ways to keep Angus's fans engaged and interested in his work. And my efforts paid off. In just two months, I was able to increase the number of followers on Angus's Instagram account from 750,000 to 7 million, elevate his Twitter following from 50,000 to 1.8 million, and establish his presence on TikTok with an impressive following of 4 million. Furthermore, Angus's widespread recognition in the fashion industry is largely attributable to my diligent efforts. Unwavering enthusiasm and steadfast commitment. Under my guidance, Agnes has forged partnerships with prominent brands including Gap, Fila, Ralph Lauren, Zara, Amiri, Ami, Reebok, Puma, among others, with some collaborations resulting in lucrative deals reaching seven figures. As a professional in the entertainment industry, I recognize the importance of separating personal emotions from financial aspects of the business. Despite the love and admiration I have for Angus, it is crucial to acknowledge that this is ultimately a business and individuals must be compensated for their hard work. As Angus's manager, I devoted myself entirely to his success and worked tirelessly to ensure that he reached his full potential. Countless hours were spent poring over contracts, negotiating deals and strategizing marketing campaigns all with the singular goal of making Angus the best he could be. In pursuit of this goal, I made countless sacrifices, both personally and professionally. Time with my family and loved ones became scarce as late nights and early mornings were spent perfecting every detail of Angus's career. Financial sacrifices were also made, with my personal resources invested into his success. Despite these sacrifices, however, one thing was always made clear. Payment for my hard work was non-negotiable. Not only is this wrong on a moral level, but it is also illegal. Despite my best efforts to resolve the issue of non-payment, my attempts have been brushed aside for over a year. This is unacceptable and I will not give up in seeking the compensation that is rightfully owned to me. I refuse to remain silent any longer and I will use 
every means at my disposal to ensure that I am compensated for my work. It continues, Angus is currently being managed by Sam Lufty and I find it incredibly interesting how Sam is somehow always associated with celebrities who are dealing with mental health and slash or addiction issues. So please keep Angus in your thoughts and prayers. Britney Spears' former pal Sam Lufty must stay away from singer. Courtney Love, Francis Bean Cobain granted a restraining order against ex-manager. A judge has granted Courtney Love and her daughter Frances Bean Cobain a permanent restraining order against her manager Sam Lufty. The Blast reported Wednesday. Rolling Stone has confirmed the report. Love's sister Jamie was already protected under Monday's ruling. On Wednesday, the judge overseeing the case who remembered Lufty from his legal drama with Britney Spears in the mid-2000s granted a five-year PRO in the case. A PRO typically spans over three years, at which point it can be renewed. But given that Lufty seems to prey upon people, the judge noted that a five-year order was instead handed down. In December, Love was given a temporary restraining order against Lufty. When the TRO was granted, Love accused Lufty of harassing her and her family with emails, texts and phone calls in an effort to recuperate money that he alleges she owed him. The escalated verbal harassment and threats of Stan Lufty left no choice for Courtney and her family to seek protection. Love's attorney, Howard King, said at the time, The Cobains are grateful for the anti-harassment order issued by the Los Angeles Superior Court against Mr. Lufty and the powers it provides law enforcement to ensure that Mr. Lufty terminates all contact with the family. Over the years, Lufty has tried to get close with Lindsay Lohan, Courtney Love and even Michael Jackson's teenage daughter, Paris. Currently, Lufty is managing Courtney Love. He continues, kindly advise that the aforementioned interview clips have been made publicly available for months and may be accessed through official social media accounts of Variety, Rolling Stone and Entertainment Tonight, accumulating over 15 million views combined. Okay, so here is where we get to the weird part because there was actually initially in page 21 of this thread a GoFundMe because I guess, and I'm I'm literally just guessing right now because I'm struggling to find the receipts around this. If anything changes, I'll definitely leave it in this video. But from what I'm gathering, he wanted help with the financial aspect of, you know, seeking litigation against Angus and his team. So the original page 21 of this thread read as follows. It's highly likely that I'm going to be facing very powerful lawyers in court soon. I'm reaching out to you all with a GoFundMe to help me out with legal fees and very much needed therapy. Any bit helps. Thank you. And in the GoFundMe, this is what it said. Thank you all for taking the time to read my story. And if you can't donate, please feel free to share my story. I am forever grateful for any assistance that you can provide. And then in colon, it says, the profile picture features a brightly colored ceramic dog, which was gifted to me by Angus when we first met. He made it by hand in art class during his stay at the rehab facility, and I've had it ever since. Now, I don't know whether the vibe is that he was intending to sell that piece, like, you know, the highest donation will get this piece made by Angus. I don't know what the vibe was, but I just thought that that was very strange. However, page 21 of this thread now continues stating the following. Please note that no non-disclosure agreements, NDAs, were ever issued or executed. Furthermore, I would like to emphasize that no violation of the health insurance, portability and accountability Act, HIPAA, was committed. Many of your assumptions, although they are understandable, they are inaccurate. Finally, I would like to clarify the information that I have provided. Though a difficult process represents factual detail and does not constitute any form of defamation, Thank you for your understanding. And finally, on page 23, they said, Sam Lufty has reached out to my friends via Instagram. So this essentially is what Diomi has to say to Sam Lufty. So let's continue. 
Dear Sam Lefty, I am disappointed to learn that you have reached out to my friends with false accusations, lies and inaccurate narratives. Instead of taking the necessary steps to ensure that your client fulfills their financial obligations. Furthermore, I would like to bring to your attention that my legal representative attempted to contact both you and your attorney representing Angus back in February 12th, but regrettably to this day, no response has been received from either party. I trust that you will take immediate action to resolve this matter and ensure that the commissions owned to be are paid promptly. Your cooperation in this regard will be greatly appreciated. Sincerely, Diome. So I guess that this is his lawyer. This is what they said. I did not hear back from Sam or Jamie, Angus's new attorney. I think we need to discuss getting a suit on the books. Let me know when you're free to chat. And I guess this is the message that has been sent to one of his friends. So this is from um, Sam Lufty. It says, careful of this creep at Diomi, by the way, at I am Diomi the other person why is that he's an absolute sociopath and pathological liar look at his twitter what he's trying to do to angus cloud profit off his illness he's not a manager a social worker he's a celebrity stalker i do not have time to read all of that but are there receipts with every tweet like i have no clue if he's owed money or not just owed money those aren't receipts who does that to someone no he's not he's hired a lawyer yeah but if he's not owed money then how exactly could he profit from it and that lawyers agreed he's a fraud and quit. He's trying to sell his story. If you're owed money, you get a lawyer and you sue. You don't air personal shit on Twitter. You unfollowed me. <laughs> okay. And that at present is the end of all of those tweets in that thread. Now, obviously, as all of this recently came out, this is still a developing story. So I haven't really formulated much opinion just yet, but the opinion it is that I have currently, which is subject to change, because we know more receipts could come out and anything could happen at this very moment in time. I have a couple of points. My point number one is that this is crazy that a talent manager would do this to one of their clients. This leads me to believe that this talent manager has no regards for his client or even friend or even member of the rehabilitation facility. He has no regard. He has no regard for his privacy. And I believe that all humans deserve a certain level of privacy. And I just don't think that outing somebody's situation with addiction is really going to contribute positively to that individual. In fact, I think it's harmful and I think it's going to hurt him immensely. And if he is dealing with addiction or even just going through the process of recovery, we all know how much of a volatile time that can be for somebody in their recovery journey so for me it's just like why would you do this do you want this person to die you crazy fuck i personally think the moral compass and the morality of this situation is pretty fucked up and it's pretty skewed however the second point is that i want to make is that if he is due money for work done he deserves to be paid and that is regardless i don't care if the guy's a criminal i don't care if the person is like the worst person in the whole entire world if you did work you should be paid for said work unless you did that work illegally that is just the facts so if it is all just about money then i hope he gets his money but i i'm just really sad that he's literally just outed somebody's you know recovery sobriety their relationship with drugs like this on social media when this is something that somebody can deal with personally it's not for the public domain the third thing is i think this guy can pretty much take out of his bio that he is a talent manager not because at this present moment he's not you know looking after any talent but mostly because who the fuck is gonna hire you now are you out of your mind like okay so say if this is a terrible situation you really tried all your best and I'm, I'm believing everything it is that comes out of your mouth which I don't at this present moment subject to change but I'm believing everything that comes out of your mouth at this very moment in time what person is ever going to hire you you could have used that as a way to propel yourself hey i've looked after and managed one of the coolest awesome actors in hollywood right now propelled their career to a certain point listen i'm moving on to different ventures you could have slid that in and spoken to another person and been managing somebody new who 
in their right mind is going to hire you. I'm a nobody and I would never hire you to look after me. Because it means that no matter what it is that I do or say, nothing is confidential. And okay, yes, there were no NDAs and yes, it's smart to have an NDA. But he also was the person who pointed out that none of his affairs were in order and that he had to help him do literally everything besides fucking wipe his ass. So he knows how vulnerable of a client this is. And he still went on with his reckless behavior. I can't respect it. I'm trying my best to like look at it from his perspective but I'm struggling to respect what he did here this is bad and the fourth point it is that I want to bring up is that I'm very familiar with Sam Lefty's name only in relation to Britney Spears if you guys know anything about Britney Spears and the Britney Spears case and everything that took place with the conservatorship and obviously her emancipation since then right you will know Sam Lefty's name and this guy is worrying to me he's dangerous and I do believe that in that small section where he's speaking about Sam Lefty's association with so many other people is wild right and then on the other hand just even how he's conducting himself on Instagram like regardless of whether that was a fan or a friend of Diomi is neither here nor there why are you just talking like that to just strangers online because clearly you don't know that person because they fucking blocked you so the whole thing is just absolutely crazy and do you know what's the worst thing instead of feeling bad for diomi who should have just went to the lawyers and kept it shtum on social media right instead of instead of feeling sorry for him or sam lefty or any of the people who have been involved in i feel sorry for angus angus is out here and we don't know the situation. He could be high, he could be in recovery. We don't know the situation. But I'm scared and I'm worried for his well being. And I'm not a person who's watching Euphoria. I'm not Euphoria's demographic. I might watch now that I know all of this. But besides that, listen, I'm a drama monger. Leave me alone, right? But besides that, I don't watch Euphoria. But even I am looking at this dude and I'm like, I'm worried for you. Because it's bad enough being a person who has addiction, right? Or an addictive personality or deals with addiction or is going through sobriety or is going through recovery. Just a person who has the disease of addiction. It's bad enough being that in this world than having literally nobody looking after your best interests. And we have seen time and time and time again. And whilst I will say as human beings, we're all responsible for our own actions and it's nobody else's problem. What you do, your life, right? Your life decisions, those are your choices. I can't help but feel. And there are so many times in Hollywood that there have been people who have had addiction issues and then everything's great, everything Gucci, boom. Next thing you know, the person is dead and it's from an overdose and it's happened so many times that it's just there is no protection out there in Hollywood Hollywood is already crazy and scary as it is and people aren't even being looked after anyway with that being said tell me what it is that you think uh, I really appreciate you for listening to today's impromptu video um this is another rant video I wasn't expecting to do this but here I am I just want to say a massive thank you to my members my patrons as well as my twitch family I really appreciate you guys for constantly holding me down tell me what it is that you guys think in the comment section down below about all of this crazy stuff what do you think about the manager what do you think about Ag Angus's future in this moment and girl do you know who sam lefty is <laughs> tell me what it is that you guys think in the comment section down below with that being said i hope you guys have an amazing day or evening whatever the hell it is that you guys are doing and until next time it's been Paige. bye